very good ladies and gentlemen we meet once again to IHR's weekly videos today we are going to talk about domestic inquiry what is domestic inquiry? I guess everybody knows by now what is domestic inquiry the basically why we do a domestic inquiry is to hold an internal hearing to establish whether an employee alleged the, whether the employee committed a misconduct or not as far as the industrial court is concerned under section 20 the court just does not ex uh, ex examine whether the employee was terminated on proper grounds but also it examines whether the procedure used to terminate the employee was proper as well. Okay? So this is a very important thing that we need to actually understand. The procedure uh, fairness in taking disciplinary action against an employee is actually quite crucial for the court to decide whether the dismissal is fair or not fair. So this is something that as we go along we will learn more. Okay? Now, what is the objective of a domestic inquiry? Ladies and gentlemen, we have spoken to about, we did a survey with about 100 over HR managers and we asked them what was the one thing they dreaded most and it was actually uh, managing discipline and 95% of them did not even know uh, how to conduct a domestic inquiry and two thirds of them actually, actually told us that they, they, they have completely lost the, the, the objective behind the, the domestic inquiry where the domestic inquiry is used as a formality to terminate employees or to take action against, uh, uh, how should I say, employees or very difficult to change them around or for some more reason or other where they want the employee out. So the decision to terminate is already made before the domestic inquiry is actually uh, conducted. So this is a wrong way to approach this and it, this is always will come back and uh, there will be repercussions on this. Okay. Now, the objective of holding a, a domestic inquiry is basically giving the opportunity for the employer to prove charges and for the employee is for the employee to, an opportunity to prove their innocence. So, what we are trying to do, the domestic inquiry is actually a fair and equitable process. Okay. Now, as I said earlier, so it is crucial that, that we must understand the basic objective of a domestic inquiry is not to use it as a formality but to use it as a fair and equitable procedure to manage a disciplinary issue. Okay? Next, what are the procedures prior to a domestic inquiry? Well, firstly, a misconduct is reported, right? The HR manager goes through and you know somebody reports uh, the heads of department make a report about a alleged misconduct. Next, we need to investigate whether the, the validity of that report, whether did a misconduct actually take place. Once we find that misconduct has taken place, we need to investigate. Once, by a form of investigation is also for us to talk to the employee concerned to find out actually what happened and get the employee's feedback on this. Okay. Now, when we go into a domestic inquiry, bear in mind what kind of uh, uh, issues that we are going for. It's not necessarily determined. It could be other disciplinary action. So, okay. So the next step we do is issue a show cause letter. Okay. When we are not satisfied with the explanation given by the staff, we issue them a show cause letter to ask for an explanation as to why we should not take any further disciplinary action against the staff. Okay. Now, based on their reply, we find that their reply is acceptable, then we proceed to the next cause of action. But when we find that their, that their, their reply is not acceptable, we issue the staff a charge sheet where we proceed to a domestic inquiry. Ladies and gentlemen, take note. A charge sheet is similar to a show cause letter. It has to have all the charges mentioned. Okay, and what sort of misconduct each charge tantamounts to. For example, if somebody lost company property while, you know, suppose like a salesman carrying a company laptop, loses it uh, due to negligence, okay, then it's a gross misconduct, misconduct which is on gross negligence. So we must be very careful what we put in our charge, show cause letter and followed by in the charge sheet as well. So do not mistaken the charge sheet to a notice of inquiry. Okay, in some cases, Okay. You may need to suspend the employee uh, because, for example, it's a serious misconduct. For example, like fighting, damaging company property, theft. So this is to number one, to not to disrupt the company's operation and also to uh, have a, to facilitate the investigation uh, as the employee would not be around and it may not be a very nice environment to have the employee still around there. Okay. Then next we proceed to the domestic inquiry. The basic principle of a domestic inquiry is one of the key elements that we need to observe here is the principle of national justice where the employee must be given full opportunity to know what are the full charges made against him, what are the details, the employee has the right to know that. Second, the employee has 
uh, has reasonable opportunity, must be given reasonable opportunity to defend himself against the charges. Number three, the management team which sits as on the inquiry panel should, should not be connected to the events or the circumstances surrounding the charge. Okay? Simply means there, there are no simple legal requirements, but a basic concept of fairness and justice must be held upheld at all times. Okay? Next. What is the role of the HR manager in this whole equation? Well, in some instances, the word HR manager plays the role of the prosecuting officer or the investigation officer in bigger in smaller organizations. Whereas in bigger organization, this role the HR manager plays more of a neutral party, the person who actually mediates things. Okay? So the first thing the HR manager does is to investigate the misconduct in an unbiased manner, not making any preconceived decisions. Okay? Next. Verify the validity of the reported misconduct. Sometimes we must understand that when employees have an issue with each other, sometimes they can actually uh, report a, a misconduct. So we need to find whether this is valid or it's just a false information. Okay. Next, once we have done our uh, uh, verified that this is a genuine misconduct, next thing we do is that we draft an issue a show cause letter to request from the employee uh, an explanation. And the show cause letter must be very clear. Time, dates time period, what happened, what transpired, location, all this information are very critical to be in there. Okay? Upon once the, the, the show cause letter, as I said earlier, is issued, then if the, with the explanation, then we next need to issue the charge sheet. Okay? After this, okay, the similarly, the charge sheet has to have the same details and what is the uh, misconduct all about. Okay? Now, Another role, which is a key role for the HR manager, is actually to coordinate the entire domestic inquiry process to make sure that it's managed in a proper and fair manner. Okay? The HR manager is responsible to select the panel members and brief them on their roles and responsibility. My dear ladies and gentlemen, bear in mind that when you brief your panel members, you should not mention anything about the case because they are a neutral party. Okay? That is very important. Next, the HR managers then appoints the prosecuting officer. Normally the prosecuting officer in bigger organizations, as I said earlier, are the heads of departments or line managers who actually reported the misconduct. But in smaller organizations, then the HR manager has to play that role. But even then, the HR manager has to go through this process of guiding everyone through the domestic inquiry process. Okay. Now, if then the, the head of department is the prosecuting officer, the HR manager then coaches and guides this head of department in how to question the employee, the excused employee, preparation of the questionnaires because it's very crucial to have everything ready before you actually go into a domestic inquiry. Okay? Next, to coach, as I said coach, go through with the prosecuting officer each question, how to question them, what are the possible answers to expect. So, for us to drive our case through, in all, in all fairness, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the HR manager sometimes has to uh, wear two hats. One, she has to be a neutral. He or she has to be a neutral party, or the other one, she has to become, uh, how should I say, take an active role in this domestic inquiry. So, HR managers, you figure it out where you want to stand on this, okay? Because it all depends on the type of organization you're in. Parties involved in domestic inquiry, panel members, okay? Panel members, from the panel members, among the panel members, then we, we they, they, they select among themselves a chairman. Okay, a chairman is selected from the panel members. Okay, next we have the accused employee, okay, the investigation officer and the prosecuting officer. And also we'll have company witnesses if there are, and defense witnesses there are, and also the secretary for the whole uh, to record the whole process. Okay. Now the role of the chairman is very clear as I mentioned earlier. Okay, the role of the chairman is a mediator. The chairman makes sure that the, uh, the, 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 the employee is given fair chance to answer his question, defend himself. Similarly, he also makes sure that the questions, or what, uh, how should I say, um, the, the, the whole process of it, he, he has to manage it. Okay? For example, introducing the, the, the uh, witnesses, introducing the uh, prosecuting officer, introducing the panel. Okay? He leads the uh, domestic inquiry. The, the, the chairman also has... Uh, sometimes has the right to actually uh, ask for further explanation when the domestic inquiry is going on. For example, if a witness gives an explanation, the, the, the cha panel chairman can actually ask the person to, to expand the, 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 the information, meaning to say, give more details about the information. So, the chairman plays a very important role here. Okay? Next, the prosecuting officer. 
His job is to submit his case to the chairman or the court. Okay? What he does is that he questions the accused employee, he questions the, 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 the uh, witnesses of the employee, witnesses of the company to establish the case to say that this alleged misconduct did take place and these are the events, these are the evidence. This is the role of the prosecuting officer to bring, to submit all this to the panel for their, uh, how should I say, for them, for the panel to then decide what kind of punishment they want, to, uh, what kind of decision they want to make. Okay. The role of the investigation officer, well, is to conduct a fair and open investigation. Then, ladies and gentlemen, when I say conduct an open and fair investigation, we need to establish the fact that in all investigation, the investigation officer cannot be biased. Okay? He has to look at the misconduct as it is and rely and collect facts. Okay? Not to collect, uh, how should I say, in a malicious manner or unbiased manner, but facts which are clear and, uh, how should I say, accurate. This is very important. Interview the, the witnesses, get their statements. Okay, Everything that you need to take statement and get it acknowledged. Okay, Prepare a proper report and submit it to the management for their uh, review. To, to really establish whether this should go forward or or any other way that the management decides to do okay and also to attend the domestic inquiry as a witness the role of the secretary is basically record what's happening in the inquiry okay and, and, and make sure everything is minuted and recorded at the end of the inquiry the secretary then prepares quickly prepares all the inquiry notes and gets everyone there to acknowledge it i.e uh, the um, Accused employee, the prosecuting officer, panel members, everybody has to sign off on this. Okay? Next. The domestic inquiry proceeding itself. Okay? The panel sits in a time and a place. Okay? The chairman introduces the panel members to the defendant um, and also uh, any objections or any challenges uh, to the, to the uh, panel members is recorded immediately. Unless the accused employee says, I don't want this person to be on the panel, well, it's recorded. Okay? Right. Uh, confirmation of witness by the parties. Okay. Choice of common language. If somebody cannot speak English, you have to use Bahasa. Then by all means, then we can use Bahasa. Okay. Okay. The chairman actually reads and explains the charges to the defendant. When the defendant he asks the defendant, do you plead, plead guilty or not? Let's say the uh, defendant says yes, I plead guilty. Then let, okay, it's easy. Then we can move on to the next step. But let's say the defendant says not guilty. Then we go into the proceeding. Okay. The chairman will again repeat the charges when the uh, accused employee actually pleads guilt, uh, not guilty. Okay, to ex explain the consequences of the offence and confirms the plea again. Okay, then once that is done, then both parties will be required. That means the companies, uh, the prosecuting officer, and the accused employee to present their case. Okay, and we, during 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 the entire process, first it starts with. The, uh, the prosecution officer or the prosecution starting the case will start questioning the witnesses, uh, the, the accused employee. So everybody goes through this motion. Okay. Once the prosecuting officer is done, then it's followed by the accused employee, who then has the right to uh, uh, to cross-examine the the uh, company's witness, just like the prosecuting officer has the right to cross-examine the the accused employee's witnesses. So the process goes on. All right. After after. Uh, once the, the prosecuting officer has finished his cross-examination and all that, again, uh, as well as the uh, accused employee finishing their uh, cross-examination, both of them final, do a final submission about their cases. Okay? The, the prosecuting officer will submit and, uh, uh, and to, 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 to establish the charges of the misconduct and prove the misconduct. The, the accused employee then submits a, a final submission to, to, to defend his innocence. So, this is the final submission. Okay. After all the witness and evidence has been put forward, okay, the chairman will then close the inquiry and release all the parties. Okay. The panel then will sit down and discuss the evidence brought up by the, the, the or I should say the findings of the actual inquiry, the, the uh, points brought up by the uh, prosecuting officer and the points brought up by the accused employee. Okay. Then after discussing and uh, 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 thoroughly with the panel members, the chairman then uh, recommends to the management the, the act of based on the findings. Then he makes a recommendation to the management. Okay. Now, bear in mind, after a domestic inquiry, it's not necessary to actually terminate an employer. Domestic after a domestic inquiry, 
there are a lot of actions we can take. Number one, we can dismiss the employee without notice. Number two, downgrade the employee, okay, or impose lesser punishment. When you say like a warning letter, uh, 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 how should I say, uh, suspension, and, and that's about it. Okay, so it's not just to terminate an employee, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's about getting to the bottom of the matter. Okay, it's about establishing the facts. It's about uh, proving the misconduct. It's about defending the innocence. So the misconduct uh, uh, needs to be proved by the company, and also it has it can be challenged by the employee. Okay, so in summary, a domestic inquiry number one is not a formal process to terminate an employee. It is a fair and equitable process to manage a disciplinary issue. Okay? Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for today. Uh, we'll meet you in the next video. So take care. All the best.